guys, I hope you're good. I'm starting today's adventure in Benfleet in Essex, about 30 miles east of London on the Thames Estuary. Connected to Canvey Island by that bridge, Benfleet was the site of a battle between the Vikings and the Saxons in the year 894. I've got the weekend off work and I wanted to get away in the van, but we're having a bit of a heat wave and the van doesn't have aircon, so I just couldn't face a long drive being boiled alive. So I decided to get out and show you around some of my more local attractions. As I walk through the moorings, I get the urge, as I always do, to buy a yacht, but then I see this narrow boat and imagine how much fun the cruise down here must have been. This barge is Gladys, a pub boat. Once you get to the end of the moorings, there's a gate hidden away with a clue as to where I'm taking you, but we need to watch out for adders in the field. I've never seen one before, but hopefully today will be my lucky day. There in the distance is where we're headed, Hadley Castle, but I'm taking you there the long way round. I'm following the seawall path along the water. I want to convince Joe and Michael to bring narrowboat perseverance out here, but looking at the wake from that boat, I think Joe might need a lot of convincing. Out in the distance there is the Isle of Grain oil refinery. These kayaks are paddling around Two Tree Island. Once a landfill site, it's now a nature reserve. That bird hide is known as Monty's Lookout. At low water, you can walk across the causeway onto the island. It's also accessible by foot and road by a bridge. There's the bridge onto the island, but I'm continuing into Leon Sea, which I featured before in my videos. From Lee there's a country path to the castle, but there were some dodgy people about so I took the longer but safer route along the road until I reached the castle. Hadley Castle was first built in the 13th century by Hubert de Burr, the first Earl of Kent. In the 14th century it was expanded by Edward III and was an important residence due to its proximity to London. In 1544, the castle was sold and broken up so that the stone could also be sold. 
Today, the ruins of the castle are owned by English Heritage, and it's a Grade 1 listed building and scheduled monument. It's easy sometimes to overlook what's right on your doorstep in favour of far-flung adventures, but anything can be an adventure if you look at it through new eyes. As the sun began to set, I made my way back to Leon Sea, which is a one and a half mile walk from the castle. If you walk back to Benfleet, it's just under two and a half miles. You can also get the train between the two stations for about three pounds each way. I'm walking back along the footpath I avoided on my way up. Everything is really well signposted in this area, which is great. After about half an hour I was back in Lee and ready to head home before the next day's adventure. That saw me just down the road in South End, a pretty typical seaside town with fun fair and amusement arcades. I would never normally go into South End on the weekend, especially not on the hottest day of the year, but I wasn't joining the crowds on the beach. Instead I was heading out onto the pier. There's a train to take you to the pierhead if you don't fancy the 1.33 mile walk. South End Pier is the longest pleasure pier in the world. At the end of the pier there are various food and drink stalls, mini golf and also a lifeboat station. but this boat is the reason I'm here today. I'm taking a one hour cruise around the bay. The reason South End Pier is so long is that in the 19th century, 10 steamers used to bring tourists from the capital to the seaside, but these boats could only dock at high tide. This meant that a lot of tourists would carry on past South End to Margate or other resorts in Kent. It was decided that a pier was needed to be built to allow boats to dock at all tides and in the 1800s the first wooden pier opened in South End. You can see the Isle of Grain oil refinery again there. Coming up now in the distance is a concrete barge. Yes, a barge made from concrete. They were made during the Second World War to transport fuel to other boats. During low tide, people come out to explore the barge. There are actually 16 of them in the Thames at Raynham, which I'll show you in a later video. The whole of this area falls under the Port of London. About a decade ago, a major dredging operation was undertaken to allow larger vessels into the port. Here you can see the Isle of Sheppey, which was the first place I ever went camping in my van. And this sunken ship is the 
Richard Montgomery, a US Second World War vessel that sank in August 1944 while carrying 1,400 tons of explosives. It's been reported that if the wreck exploded, it would break every window in sheer nest. There's an exclusion zone around the ship, and she is constantly monitored by the Maritime and Coast Guard Agency. The wreck is regularly surveyed, and there are mixed opinions on what, if anything, to do. Cost has been cited as a reason that the Montgomery has been left as it is. However, there are plans in place to remove the masts of the ship. Before long, my trip was coming to an end. The boat company run loads of different trips around the estuary. i definitely use them again. I'll leave a link for their website in the description. By the time I was back at the pier, I was ready for some chips and a slush puppy before catching the train back to shore. If you'd like to see more of what Essex has to offer, let me know in the comments and I'll take you along for some other days out. But for now, thanks for watching and I'll see you all again soon.